Over the years, Kilauea has been the source of spectacular eruptions and lava flows on Hawaii Island. A time-lapse camera in June and September 1986 captured lava bursting from one of Kilauea's lava tubes, flowing over a sea cliff and spreading over a delta below. Today at Kilauea, a vent is billowing gas, dust, and bits of volcanic glass as magma rises up through an underground conduit and out of a break in the surface at Halemaumau Mau Crater in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, which is home to Kilauea, Hawaii's most active volcano. This eruption began in March 2008 and produces a plume that towers thousands of feet over the island. It's one of a number of changes on Kilauea Volcano's summit and adjacent areas that have occurred this year. Congressman Neil Abercrombie, a member of the House Natural Resources Committee, which has jurisdiction over the national park system, is among the park visitors on this day. He's here to see how the park is handling the volcanic activity. Visitors here don't feel any noticeable tremors, but a seismograph inside the Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory detects activity in Hale Mau Mau. The activity coincides with a visible change in the plume which grows darker and more turbulent. Scientists believe the plume turns dusty brown when the rock around the vent collapses into the conduit. Gas rushing at a high speed to escape the vent gathers bits of rock to color the plume. But again, you know, this is how you manage an active volcano. Park Superintendent Cindy Orlando says this eruption and other volcanic activity in the park poses unique challenges to her staff, which constantly monitors the sulfur dioxide or SO2 gas emissions. The park works with other federal agencies, such as the National Weather Service and USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey, to monitor the gas levels and to guard public safety. Their job is to monitor that volcano. Yeah. They give me the information I need to make decisions about visitor use and enjoyment of the park. Yeah. Um, but, because, but subsequent to all of this coming into play and, and the acquisition of all the monitoring equipment that we needed, as well as additional air quality stations, um, and then individual handheld monitors that every ranger in the field now has. Yes. We can we can make decisions based on you know it, it's all it's usually isolated pockets of oh, nasty sure. air. Sure. So we we should never have to close down the entire park at the same time ever again. We we can make decisions and close incrementally parts of the park. In March is when it first started venting out and uh, it's gotten bigger and larger over the months. Uh, basically what you're seeing here at the, the magma chamber, you know, I remember where you start with the down deep, yeah. the magma chamber is really right in this part. Uh, it, it's, it's in this half of the caldera, it's not up in this area. It starts here, goes on the other side of the old chain of craters road, and it's about two miles across. And if you look at the diameter of Hale Ma'oma'o, and you imagine that standing on edge, that's how far it is to the top of the magma chamber. Uh, it's only down about okay. a half a mile right over here on uh -huh. this side of the caldera. So it's all moving. It's all oh, moving. it's all mm -hmm. it's always it's moving. It's all moving. It's all <laughs> always moving. We just don't know a whole lot about where yeah, and yeah, when yeah. and mm -hmm. how. It's a pretty complicated system under there. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so we've got the lava's worked its way up, you know, down at the bottom of this hole. It glows at night. Mm -hmm. uh, the lava's down only a few hundred feet down in the hole. They've actually done overflights. You can see it down in there. So it is up close. Every day they've got trays out that they're doing uh, collection. The U.S. Geological Survey people are here again, and they're picking up everything from uh, juvenile lava. That's lava that's never been up in ash. So the juvenile lava, things like the Pele's tears, mm -hmm. Pele's hair, uh, small pieces of spatter and stuff. We have a chunk in, the, in there. It's about so big, you can see. And so that's the juvenile stuff, showing that the lava has actually made it up close enough to be erupted. And that's going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. it's, not very, it's not really a major eruption like most people imagine lava to be, but it is an eruption. And there is ash included in there, other, it's other called mm -hmm. other pieces of tephra, which is pieces on the side that have gone down and been ejected out with the juvenile lava. So that's, that, yeah, that's something that we get com concerned about in terms of the air quality oh, and the, sure, the sure, particulates sure. In, the, in the plume yeah. at times. Uh, there's a little more ash than others, and that's, that's really what you have to be most concerned right. about with the bog, is the particulate matter. And that's where I think we really, we all Collectively, all of the agencies need to do more work sure. on capturing the, the, the uh, monitoring of that data, um, analyzing perhaps what some of the effects are. 
right now it's ranging anywhere from uh, seven or eight hundred okay. tons to sometimes fifteen hundred tons a day, a day coming out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that so amazing? It's exacerbated. That's, that's, I mean, tons. that's the issue. That's so it's tons double. Of, tons of, of material coming up. Now I did this Isn't for Jim Dale. He probably still has a thing, but at two hundred tons a day, it was enough sulfur coming out, sulfur dioxide coming out every day, just to the two hundred tons a day here to fill one hundred and fifty Goodyear blimps. Wow. Well, we have. Uh, monitoring devices for sulfur dioxide gases in the air and so these are personal monitoring devices so they tell us what the parts per million are of sulfur dioxide in the air every ranger in the field now has one of these and can give us um, a, a, a situation report at any given time that you know we're going into code orange or we're in yellow mm -hmm. or where is the part of it that um, detects what's in the air like where's the sensor part the white cotton on the top. Ah, okay. So the air goes in there and then it gets evaluated. Um, we now have the opportunity to, by downloading this, we can now capture and, and develop a baseline, establish a baseline, which we've never had before. So, We're actually registering uh, uh, detectable sulfur dioxide in the air right now. So we put up advisory signs and uh, usually seal the building so that we at least have a place so that people can uh, move to. Um, if they feel affected. Of course, yeah, a lot of times at low levels, which it's at right now, uh, different individuals have different sensitivities. Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's respiratory problems. That's the biggest factor, is it'll affect your respiratory system first. But you can get stinging in your eyes if it starts Burning raining eyes. droplets, mm -hmm. so we get acidic rain here. And uh, uh, you know the visibility isn't very good either so sometimes we have low visibility on the roadway which is a side effect um, this is easily the most remarkable part of it all is so incredible in that in that sense that you have so many unique circumstances that you have to make decisions about it's virtually very daily. challenging yeah. it, it's from minute to minute it's a park on the move yeah <laughs> and well, literally. nothing and it, that's right literally <laughs> the only park in the system that continuously creates new land um, and right now, the visitors have an incredible opportunity, a historic event, because we have two Kilauea lava flows, mm -hmm. one going into the sea on the county land outside of the park on the eastern side of Kalapana, and then right here at the summit with the plume. And that's yeah, just that incredible. Yeah.